Welcome back to a special edition of The Debrief, and I'm joined by Hill reporter Rafael Bernal. Welcome, Rafael. Good to Thanks. see you. Thanks for having me. Likewise. Yeah, so you've been following several races, and the first one we want to talk about is Colorado's 8th new congressional district, where Democratic State Representative Yadira Caraveo has won the race. Her Republican challenger, State Senator Barbara Kirkmeyer, conceded last night. And tell us more about this race, which was very competitive and yeah. has a historic component to it, I well, believe. It was super competitive, uh, the historic. Yes, she will be the first Latina to represent Colorado. Um, Latinos have represented Colorado both in the House and Senate. Remember, uh, Ken Salazar, now ambassador to Mexico, he was, he was a Colorado senator. He's from Pueblo. Uh, but Yadira Carabello, a doctor, uh, her, her race uh, for Hispanic Democrats was, was one of the key races that they, they wanted to play in this year. Uh, for they, they, first of all, they, they helped redistrict it. They helped draw the line, the, the Hispanic Democrats. And the, uh, the primary included more than one Hispanic Democrat. Um, Yadira Carabeo won her primary. And she gets to represent this, this district that um, it's only about 20 or 25% uh, Hispanic. But it's, it's very important because it sort of covers a little bit of suburb, a little bit of city, and a little bit of rural area, which, which means for Hispanics, you have agricultural workers, but you also have you know, people who work in cities and stores. And so you, you, it's kind of a very across the board um, interest in representation. There's a lot of districts like that this, this year mm -hmm. you had you, you had a race where I think Hispanic voters not only participated again consistently for the, for the third or fourth election in large numbers, but for the second or third election really made a difference in, in races throughout the country. So we've talked on Rising a whole lot about whether the Hispanic vote is trending uh, in a more Republican uh, direction, obviously not overall, but right. the re Republicans doing better with Hispanic voters. Um, did we see that come up a little short, perhaps? I know, so Myra Flores, a candidate we've talked about a lot, has, has not won. Obviously, she was against a Hispanic right. candidate as well. Uh, but uh, we, we, you know, what do you make of the nights uh, of election results in, in terms of that framing? So I think, and, and it's interesting to, to watch, it, it, Hispanic voters went back to their sort of their traditional base behaviors. Mm. And you see that, that, that you'd think that would just benefit Democrats, but in Florida, that absolutely benefits Republicans. Well, in Florida is a, I mean, not yeah, I mean, DeSantis did much better, even uh, the really turning the whole state uh, red, even in terms yeah. of Hispanic he, voters. I mean, he went from winning by 0.5% to winning by 20%. Yeah. That, that's huge. Um, redistricting had a lot to do with that one as well. DeSantis fought for the redistricting that he wanted, and you know he's seeing the results of that. He's done good politics, very aggressive politics, but good politics. But he also got... Better, you know, better votes with with the, uh, of course, the Cuban population in Florida that's traditionally been Republican, but also Venezuelans, Colombians, Puerto Ricans. That's key because Puerto Ricans were sort of the mm -hmm. the great the great Democratic hope in Florida, and frankly, Democrats didn't invest enough, and and that's sort of the story throughout the country. Democrats didn't invest enough in a race that they thought they were nationally going to lose, but in some key spots, and a lot of these key spots were either Hispanic districts or, or districts with Hispanic candidates, the Hispanic Democrats made those investments mm. when the national party wouldn't because they, they sort of have this need to grow. Mm. They, they, don't, they can't just sit back and like, you know, have a 180 uh, member minority and, and wait for the next election. The uh, sort of with, with demographic growth comes a need for more representation. So there's that extra hunger, I think, that, that showed up really throughout the country. Outside Florida, uh, I, I think you, some might have expected that Democrats' messaging focus on uh, dem democratic integrity, the, the fate of democracy and abortion, might not necessarily be the most appealing messages to, uh, to Latino voters. But clearly, it, it, it has connected on some level. So Can you I, share your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that they're actually both very important issues. They're, they're, of course, secondary to the economy. We've been talking about it for, uh, for mm -hmm. what seems like years, but it's only been like six months. Yeah. Um, but they, they're both crucial. Why? The first thing is Latinos are very young. And Latinas especially tend to be very 
very uh, progressive. In states like California, where you know that's that's a quarter of the entire Hispanic population of the country. Um, but but if you're an 18 year old Latina, whether it's in California or Florida or Texas. The, the abortion issue, you, you're going to see it from a different lens than, say, uh, Mitch McConnell would. Right. Um, and then the issue of democracy is a little bit of um, it's what DeSantis and, and Florida Republicans were very effective at, at labeling as communism, saying basically, like, if you vote for a Democrat, you're voting for, you know, a dictator like Nicolas Maduro or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, throughout the country, with the exception of Florida, Democrats have been very effective in saying, like, wait, you know, your grandparents or you or your parents came here for democracy, for freedom. And that democracy can go away. And that's mm. a much more appealing message to say Mexican Americans who never, well, nobody's alive who's lived in, in the dictatorship in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there's more like, there's more of a sentiment of, of sort of skidding downwards on democracy because a lot of us have lived in the pretty uh, shoddy democracy in Mexico, but not mm -hmm. a dictatorship. So it's a very different experience from a Cuban or a Venezuelan. Since a major, same with Central America, um, you know, historical mm -hmm. times are a little bit different, but a similar experience. Um, so, so you have a very different message on democracy versus the socialism, communism thing that works with people of diff different national origins. And then just like for like third generation Latinos, Mexican Americans throughout the country, and I, I, I touch on Mexican Americans because they are the majority of Latinos. But this also this message also worked obviously with people of different national origins. It's just a good message after January 6, the same way it would be for a younger millennial or Gen Zer of any ethnic background. Mm. Well, you've also been following a couple other races in New Mexico and other places. Uh, what else should we know about? So this morning, uh, they, they called New Mexico too. That's that's a district that's been that's a district that covers the entire uh, U.S. Mexico border, the New Mexico part of it. Um, that one's been bouncing back and forth from uh, from Republicans and Democrats. This time, Democrats won. It's mm. no coincidence that it's after redistricting. Again, Hispanic Democrats, a uh, bold pack, the Hispanic Caucus campaign arm, played strongly redistricting there. Um, that was called for Democrats for uh, Gabe Vasquez replacing Yvette Harrell, who was famously an election denier, but you know touches into that democracy part. Mm. Um, I'm looking at Oregon 6 and Oregon 5. In Oregon 6, probably a Latina Democrat will, will win. In Oregon 5, probably a Latina Republican will win, Me, flipping that seat to the GOP. So, you know, it wasn't all lost for Republicans outside of Florida. There, there are some, especially um, Oregon 6. And I'm looking at Washington 3. Washington 3 is a very interesting case. Everybody wrote it off. Um, it's been a Republican district forever. Um, Kent, a pro-Trump Republican, um, beat um, Representative uh, Jamie Herrera Butler in mm -hmm. the primary. And so we're seeing one of those races where, where it's been a moderate Republican seat mm -hmm. forever. And a very pro-Trump Republican is running against a complete unknown for, on the Democratic side and the complete unknown, also a Latina. Uh, she's, she's done much better than expected. She seems to be up. We're waiting for the late results. Apparently, Washington State is one of those places that takes forever. But uh, it's been a contest where very few people were expecting mm. it. Oh, to live in a country where they wrap up these votes on time. Come they, on, we've got to know. The Brazilians have an electronic system. They, they know within hours. It <sighs> seems to work. Making me jealous. Yeah. All right, Rafael, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll, of course, continue to cover all these latest developments here at The Hill and on Rising. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.